We'll start off the course talking about whole numbers and place value. And we, get, we begin with the discussion of number systems. And throughout history, numbers have been used even in very ancient civilizations. And the most basic reason that they have been used ha has been to keep track of things. For example, you might imagine counting sheep. And I'm not just talking about counting sheep trying to fall asleep. You might actually have uh, someone a long time ago who was a shepherd and he had a certain number of sheep and he might not have been able to count, but he might have had a handful of pebbles and he knew that there was one pebble in his hand for every sheep. And as the sheep came into the pasture, he could move a pebble from one side to another and he could have a one-to-one -one correspondence between the sheep and the pebbles. And if the sheep went through the gate and um, he had some pebbles left over, he knew some sheep were missing. This was a little bit of a cumbersome system with the development of just basic numbers and the ability to count. You could just remember one number. If you had 38 sheep, then you could just count them as they went through the gate and you would know if you had any missing and you didn't have to carry around pebbles or physically move them around. Numbers are just a basic part of everyday existence. They help us keep track of things. Um, counting people, obviously, you can count anything with numbers. And different number systems have been used. As civilizations get more advanced, they need more, uh, more advanced number systems and more of an ability to do things with them. If you're going to buy and sell land, for example, and they were doing that in very ancient, ancient cultures, you need, you need to be able to calculate the area of the land and calculate the cost, maybe even calculate taxes on the land and interest rates and things like that. And all of that was going on in very ancient times. And throughout history, different types of number systems have been used. And here are two examples from a long time ago. Egyptian hieroglyphs. Here's a picture, a picture of some Egyptian hieroglyphs. And these, these little drawings up here that you see on the wall here, that's writing. These little pictures actually represent words, like this little bird here means something. And I, I'm not an expert in ancient writing. But you see this picture of an eye or this picture of a person. All these mean things. And they had little pictures to represent numbers as well. So if you want to make a, in your notes, you can recognize that Egyptian hieroglyphs are pictures. You could draw a little picture of a bird, for example. And I don't know exactly what the bird meant. It's not important. It's just the, the important point is they had different symbols for different numbers. You're probably familiar with Roman numerals where they use a capital I for a 1, uh, two I's for a 2, 3 for a 3, and for a 4, you could either do four of them like that, or you could do IV for a 4 and then a V for a 5. And you've probably learned this before. This is another system of numbers. Now, the number system that we use, where we have 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, this number system goes way back to the ancient Hindu people and the ancient Arab people. The Hindus developed it originally, or started to, and they actually invented the zero around the 4th century BC. And that was a big deal, the invention of the zero, that allowed numbers to be used in the way that we use them today, which allows math to be done a lot more easily. And that was a long time ago, the 4th century B.C. We're talking about almost two and a half thousand years ago. And, and the Hindus invented that, and it was later adopted by the Arabs. So it's sometimes referred to as the Hindu-Arabic system. And this system uh, then came from, from the Arabs into the Western world, Westerners, first learned about it from um, Arabic writings. And it, it quickly became the dominant system because it's superior to other number systems. And it's wi in widespread use today all over the world for that reason. In particular, mathematical operations are far easier to do using this number system with the zero and different place values than mathematical operations would be in other numbers. Imagine in Roman numerals, for example, if you're in the Roman numeral system, um, X meant 10, uh, L meant 50, C meant 100, D meant 500, and M meant 1,000. So what if you had to do some math? What if you had M, D, C, L, X, X, I, and you want to multiply that by, by D, X, V, I? How would you do that? 
that is a really difficult problem. But people had to do that at one time. So when you're doing math problems and you think to yourself, oh my goodness, I've got to do some long division or something like that, just realize how much more difficult it would be with a more cumbersome number system. Or what if you had to add or subtract or multiply and divide using little pictures to represent your numbers? That, that would be probably even more difficult. So the, the number system that we use is extremely efficient and it makes math a lot easier than it otherwise would be. The key to understanding our number system and to being able to use it lies in this concept of place value. Our number system is called a place value system and that means that each digit in a number sits in a certain place and each place has a certain value. And you've probably seen this before but I'm going to go over it right now because it's extremely important and this is the whole key to being able to do math with our number system. This number 374, the position of the 3 and the 7 and the 4 all mean something and specifically the 3 means 3 hundreds and the 7 means 7 tens and the 4 means 4 ones. So if you take all of those together you have 3 hundreds and seven tens and four four ones that means you have a total of three hundred and seventy four and understanding this concept of place value is the key to understanding our whole number system and how it works